Well, hello, this is our review of chapter 13, which is all about the Harriet Walters fraudulent tax refund scheme. So we will move through the um, mechanics of the fraud. We'll actually look at the data. And right at the end in the book, it talks about Mary. And Mary had a fraud scheme that was going on at the same time that Harriet was arrested, kept it going until Harriet was convicted and kept going on after that. And needless to say, the judge had some choice words for the Washington DC finance people about getting a parallel fraud running at the same time as Harriet. And absolutely, Mary was undeterred. So this case is important for a number of reasons. Number one, the large dollar amount in total, the large individual dollar amounts, the fact that we have the fraud data available to us, the fact that it carried on for 18 years and was only detected because of Harriet's carelessness in the end. And lastly, absolutely no rationalization present. This wasn't a fraud triangle. This was just a fraud with opportunity and um, pressure. So let's have a look at the um, how it worked. Tax refund fraud scheme, $49.3 million. 18-year duration. The auditors saw the supporting documents and accepted it as authentic. The internal controls were strong, but Harriet herself was one of the people that administered these controls. There was no line item in the budget for property tax refunds, so there was no variance or no difference between actual and expected numbers. It was not detected by external audit. It was not detected through any proactive fraud detection. Not a tip, not a management review, or by accident. Detected because of Harriet's carelessness, the extent of her greed, and the skepticism of Chris Thorne, a banker. So, fraud awareness training, we'll talk about that as well. Harriet. There's Harriet. This was Harriet's house. Oregon Avenue Northwest. You can uh, have a look at it uh, on Zillow if you like. Every morning Harriet took the bus to work uh, and now it's worth close to a million dollars. The house contained lots and lots of things. The FBI described her home as a high temple of conspicuous consumption. When the FBI used really nice words like this, trust me, you have a nice crib. Harriet worked in this building, well, after a while, uh, not for the whole time. Um, this was the, towards the uh, middle of the scheme. She worked in this building, looks like just a simple, nice building in Washington, DC. A dysfunctional work environment. Watch this, a culture of apathy and silence. Employees did the bare minimum, kept their heads down, Many Office of Tax Revenue employees knew that Walters lavished gifts and extraordinary sums of money on friends and co-workers. Sometimes they gathered outside her office. Nobody asked where this money came from. Now, there were three types of property tax refunds, and the ones that we care about are these court-ordered assessment reduction refunds. She focused on these at least towards the end of the scheme. This is where... The district says your building is worth so much. You think it's only worth that much, a lower number. After the entire rigmarole and all the procedures, the court says, yes, your building is worth the lower amount. And now you get a refund because of the property tax overpaid because you actually need to pay the tax on the original assessed amount. And you can only get your refund after you've gone through this exhaustive three year ordeal. These were the ones she liked. Now, we have the fraud data. Isn't this nice? She started 1989, 4,000. And you know what I'd call this? A nicely furnished room, really nicely furnished room. Well, we move over from nicely furnished room to a eh, nice car. Then we go all the way down, car, 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 sort of nice car, very nice car, nice car, nice car, house. A single fraudulent transaction for $543,000. Eh, 
and change. Now we move sort of house car, house car, house car, huge amounts. And let me see if anything catches my eye. Here we go. Exactly 250,000. In the book, I talk about the fact as to how this is calculated. It's the difference between the two assessed values times the tax rate plus 5.5% interest for the per year, for the period overpaid. The answer to that bit of arithmetic is never going to equal 250,000, 126,000. What's the round numbers? 335,000, 24,000. Uh, they should just pop up here. 350,000. Remember how this calculation is done? 340,000. Should never get there. Watch this too. Hold for pickup. Except once we hold for pick. But mostly we hold for pickup. A huge flaw, F-L-A-W, flaw in internal control. When we do things like hold for pickup, this is when our employees can actually get home get home, get hold of the checks. They need to go out in the mail to the payee and the address. Well, these people never knew about these refunds. Um, they were diverted for Harriet's own use. So the real property owner had no clue what was happening behind the scenes. Watch the hold for pickup, hold for pickup. Watch the round numbers, staggering amounts to, staggering amounts to, and this was the beginning of the end, that $410,000. Well, let's see where the money went to. Harriet had expensive tastes. $1.2 million at Neiman Marcus. American Express. A million dollars at the door jewelers. Interiors. Like to gamble. And if we did many more of these cases, Half the time, gambling is involved. Let's have a look at Adore Jewelers. Thanks to Christopher Davis, one of my best students so far. And Chris actually sent me an email saying, hey, I know where Adore Jeweler is, as Andy took some photos for me. So, thanks, Chris. Adore Jewelers. Isn't it nice to have a million dollar customer? Adore Jewelers. More of Adore Jewelers. If you drive past, take some more photos for me. I'd like to see it. I actually went and spent time at the office of the Chief Financial Officer and we had a reasonably serious meeting. This was me in the morning and uh, that is their offices in the background. Okay, back to PowerPoint. Let's do some analytics on the numbers. The date, 18 years. The amounts. We can see two high flyers over there popping up close to 550,000 for a single fraudulent transaction. Small, sabbatical, sabbatical. This is when they changed the counting systems. And now this looks like kamikaze fraud up, up and away, a huge variation in the numbers, and we are reaching for the sky, bigger and bigger and bigger. The first digits, very unbenefited, and this is nice, she made up the numbers, and they were not benefited. Second digits, she really didn't like that zero. She liked the two as a second digit, Remember, these are invented numbers. She's making up documentation. She's making up the number. Here it is, the last two digits, the cents, about 32% of the numbers ended in double O is cents. Remember that calculation. Assessed value minus the true value times the tax rate. It's either 1.65 or 2.65% times plus interest. 5.5% per year for the period overpaid. That answer should never end up as a double O. It should be randomly distributed from double O to 99. She even duplicated, remember we have the number duplication test from an earlier chapter. She duplicated and reused some numbers. So 
We have 14 numbers here that were reused, including that fateful 410,000 down there. This is just a graph of the duplicates. So in other words, when these uh, dots are at the same height, it's because the numbers are exactly equal. And you can see we have 14 of them here. Over here, this is quite interesting. The duplication occurred so soon after each other that it seems to be one dot. Um, and so had the auditors run anything like number duplication on the uh, refunded tax or the tax refunds, they would have found this number occurring twice in calendar year 2006. And in and of itself, this is a very high number for a tax refund. And for it to be duplicated should have been nigh impossible. This graph brings a little tear to my eye. These are the total refunds. This is what Harriet stole. And I'm just trying to get the date now. I believe if we go from 2000 to 2007 or from 2001 to 2007, I think it's from 2000 to 2007, Harriet stole 24% of the total amount refunded. How you can lose 24% of an entire expense category to fraud and not notice it and have the bank notice it is hard to believe. What this does is this points out that when it comes to the large dollar refunds, because these should have been very rare and indeed they were, Harriet stole a very high percentage of the high dollar refunds and any type of stratified sampling should have picked it up. Well, Harriet had an accomplice, Walter Jones. Walter Jones worked in this bank. I took the photo rather quickly and uh, made my way out of there. Walter was fired. Walter was fired for accepting gifts from customers. When somebody internally colludes with an external person that's not accepting gifts from customers, that is closer to collusion. Walter got fired. Harriet always used accomplices, and these were trusted friends and family. Jay Reese opened a bank account at what at a bank in a Safeway store. So it's one of these little branches that you see inside your local grocery store. She then deposited four hundred and ten thousand in that bank. Sorry about that balloon, I couldn't cut it off. She deposited 410000 and just one week later, she wrote a check for 200000 and tried to withdraw it. And that was the beginning of the end. So, deposited 410000 bank was very convenient. It's a really nice safe way. If you go there, it's, it has a bakery, it has a blockbuster. Well, I suppose the blockbuster's gone now. Pharmacy, dry cleaners, a lovely store. Well, seven days later, she tries to withdraw 200,000 and that set off an alert, as it should. Now, the bank's holding on to the money and what Harriet Walters does is she forges, now the bank wants to know whether uh, Jay Reese was entitled to it, Harriet forges a letter. Well, she forged the signature of the manager. She sent the letter to the bank saying everything is good. That $410,000 refund, Jay Reese was entitled to it. Well, Chris Thorne, who was headquartered in that bank there, this is, you know, those little banks aren't a standalone branch. They're almost just like a teller. Um, Chris Thorne was in here and he wasn't buying the story. What they do is they then get an attorney and the attorney writes a letter. Miss Turnbull has gone above and beyond reasonable ability. You are penalizing for a mistake. There's not no mistake. She opened a business account in good faith. You have to give her money back. 
The matter has gone on long enough. You have no legal reason to continue to refuse the release of the funds. If they are not released within five days, why five days? Why, if a customer is actually legally entitled to the money, do you have to give the bank five days? If you do not release it within five days, I will advise her what further legal remedies she may pursue. What I think the attorney should have done was really ask Jay Reese where that money came from. Uh, maybe he or she wouldn't have written such a letter. She may choose to file a lawsuit against you, seeking the return of the check and the damages she has suffered. This is rather amazing. Harriet is going after the bank as if the bank has stolen Harriet's hard-earned money. I was shocked by this. Well, let's have a look. This, uh, if memory serves me correctly, this was dated 2009. Okay, Harriet, nature of the offense. All sorts of things, including tax evasion, since you didn't pay tax on the money. 210 months. By my arithmetic, 17 and a half years. You owe the 48 million that you stole, and you owe the District of Columbia the income tax on 48 and a half million, and you owe the IRS the income tax on 48 million. So, in total, you need to pay back uh, whatever this turns out to be. I think it's uh, 64 million, the 64 million dollar question. You have to pay this off at $100 per month. Mm -mm -mm. It'll take a while to do that. Let's just have a look at a news headline here. Sentenced to 17 and a half years. She was arrested in November 2007. I believe from the court records that she was not granted bail. And that was a very clever decision on the part of the judge. Number one, she had access to huge amounts of money. Who knows where, but she might well have hidden large amounts of money. She stole 48 million. She had access to large amounts of money. She was uh, uh, born in the uh, US Virgin Islands. She could have done a duck overseas, <clears throat> never to be seen again. And people who are looking at a 17 and a half year sentence who have money and the ability to flee the country will do so. So, this is June in which she's sentenced, but I believe she has been was held since the, uh, November 2007. Just to give you a clue, in November 2007, there was no iPhone. I think I have that right. Um, no iPhone, maybe the iPhone, it was close to the first iPhone, but I think I that said no iPhone. Now, She's still incarcerated, but we have more, more to look at. This was my letter to Harriet. This was when I lived there. Miss Walters, I am the author. I am also the author of. And I carry on and I say, I would love to know how you invented your numbers. What sort of formula you used or whether you thought too deeply about how you invented these numbers. I've yet to get an answer from her. Maybe she's busy, but maybe she's not. Let's have a look. This was about uh, a few months ago. Coleman, low, so low security, release date, 2022. If we go back here, sentence to 17 and a half years, November 2007 plus 17 and a half years. She was given time off for good behavior. It's about 12.5%. She was given a year off because she went into the alcohol rehabilitation program. It is amazing to me how many fraudsters go into the Bureau of Prisons alcohol rehabilitation program. Why would they do that? Because they drink? Uh -uh. No, wrong there. Not because they drink, because you get a year off your sentence if you go into the program. I don't know what the program entails, but it's worth a year off. I see it time and time again, just by way of an example. If we go back one chapter uh, to Catherine Harrell, the bank employee, she got a year off 
because she also went into the alcohol rehabilitation program. It should be called one year discount for all fraudsters. Okay, Harriet gets one year plus she gets good time putting her at 2022. You would think 2022. <clears throat> think again. She's out. Baltimore RRM residential re-entry program. She's out. So she got a discount for good behavior, a sort of discount for alcohol rehabilitation, and the discount for coronavirus. Hmm. So that's Harriet. That's the end. So I've enjoyed sharing uh, my thoughts with Harriet. Just remember, we have the fraud data, 18 years, and probably the most exciting part of this for you after we've done here is that I have two cases using the Harriet Walters data. So I have the data available in an Excel file. Use Excel. I have a guidance video. I need to uh, put the um, reference in here. And in the first case, I talk about just some descriptive statistics, a logical test over here. Um, first digits, first two digits, mean absolute deviation. It's a nice learning exercise. I like this and students generally do well at it. We up the ante for 13.2. We do a periodic graph. Remember going back to chapter two. I talk about a seasonal pattern and for the seasonal pattern you do have to go back to the previous chapter on time series. We calculate the duplications and we figure out how to put it into a neat table like that. We talk about Harriet's round numbers, identify the round numbers, calculate the round number percentage. This case is, as well is well received by students. So. I've enjoyed th sharing my thoughts with you on Harriet's case. And so from me to you, it's bye-bye.